when we picked the topic change for this conference, uh, we were actually inspired by King.com. And I met the first time Ricardo when King.com was called Midas Player, I believe, no? And we met at Shaftesbury Avenue in a, yep. in a very small office. You had a lot of papers on your desk and I went to the wrong floor. The, the carpet was a bit crooked and there were a lot of stains. And you kind of felt, wow, that's a, that's a startup here, right? And that's probably 10 years ago. I don't, I don't remember, a long time ago, no? It was actually 11 years ago. 11 years ago. Yeah. Then we didn't talk for a long time because I, I got in trouble at Lehman Brothers Ivory Tower, who told me go after big companies, not after small companies. And then we spoke when you got to traction, there was this German company Game Duel. I believed that there was a stake sold in the business for a relatively modest valuation. And then I heard you had 300 million of EBITDA. Like this, bang. So. This was my perspective, and I know the way to that point must have been one of the hardest entrepreneurs' job I've ever seen, because <clears throat> you came from the social world, mobile and Facebook came, and you had to change completely. Now, yeah. from a dusty carpet in Shaftesbury Avenue to, I think now it's more than 300 million EBITDA, how did you do this? Okay, so. I think the latest update, I think we did a, around a billion dollars in EBDA over the last four quarters. One billion dollars LTM. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more or less. Uh, it's been exciting, it's been fun. Uh, <laughs> it's been continuous learning, that's why I'm here, because it's, I like opportunities, that's the reason why I started the company and that's the reason why I'm here, uh, why I'm still here, because there's a big opportunity. You never changed, by the way. Huh? I mean, I remember the first time I invited you to Noah, which was 2009. You said, sure, I do it. And I said, should I really have him? It's just one of these other online gaming guys. Well, but he was such a nice guy, and it was my first. And I really ha thought he has an interesting story to say. And he talked, yeah, we will also make it on Facebook. And I said, OK, a lot of people are saying that. But what I really value about you, you never change, no matter if uh, Midas player or King.com worth 5 billion or 20 million. You are always the Ricardo and that, that I think is, is worth a big thank you from Noah for, for coming here. Don't forget who were with you in the early days. I can tell you my secret. There is not much to change. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if, if I come back to, to your question, basically, what, what have we done and how have we done it? I think that it's all about people. So when you have all your eggs in one basket, you want to make sure that the basket actually is a good basket. And so we started a company with people with whom we worked before. Uh, we were six at the beginning, and uh, now we are a bit more than 1,100. And it's always about people. We have handpicked every single person so from, how from day you one. Pick, you have a talent to find the right people, pick them well, and keep them happy? Uh, I, think, I think that's my, that's my key task. Uh, oh, you have like soccer player and flipper and all those things in the office? No. We have also all this stuff, of course, yeah. But, <laughs> but I think more importantly is that uh, at the beginning, of course, I selected every person. Or we actually we came together because we knew each other, we trusted each other. Uh, now it's a bit more, let's say, there, there's more of a process behind. <laughs> but the process behind means every person goes through six interviews at least. And uh, it's not just from, let's say, if a person in marketing, you don't have only interviews with, with people in marketing, you also have interviews with people in technology, people in different areas. So that we test not only basically how good you are in your technology, in your, in your field, but also if you fit with the team. Uh, we think that uh, it's very important to have fun. Uh, I have fun in what I do, and every day we spend more time at work than we do with, the, with our families. So every day, you know, we want to make sure that people have fun in what they do. To, we, we say, to create fun, you must have fun. Well, for me, this is kind of the message uh, of the conference, because we heard it a few times. We heard it from Avito earlier today. You can only trigger change and scaling up with the right people. So um, now you have the right people. And in fact, uh, we looked it up. You are entertaining almost like around 400 million people playing your games. I think Candy Crush is a famous one. But I mean, you are not a pop star, but you're probably creating more entertainment than any other pop star of the world, yet probably nobody recognizes you on the street. How does it feel to entertain so many people? I think it's great. Uh, I think it's the, 
it's what I would say keeps us motivated, right? I mean, if I think uh, what I tell to when I do a recruiting job and uh, or when uh, we talk to companies, for example, we brought on board now the guys from nonstop in, uh, in Singapore, and I told, look, what is it about? Creative people, we want to bring on board the best talent in the world, and a small team can change the world. Because the only thing you have to do is to create the best game, and once you create the best game, the entire world is going to see it. We launched uh, a, a sister title to Candy Crush a couple of days ago. Uh, I think it was on Wednesday, in fact. We opened up the gates, no marketing, and now it's number one worldwide in all the top uh, stores in, in terms of installs. You already answered my next question. Is King.com a one-trick pony? It oh, one-trick like pony. <laughs> but I think, I, I think I gave the answer there at the last earnings call. Uh, we, we uh, busy Candy Crush does, does more than, uh, let's say, a billion dollars in, uh, in, uh, in uh, bookings. We uh, now have uh, over a billion dollars in bookings from non-Candy Crush games. So non-Candy Crush mm -hmm. games generate 49% of our global revenues. Is it growing? Uh, uh, yeah, it's doing and very it's growing well. growing because Candy Crush, I mean, how long do these 400 million people play Candy Crush? I mean, I mean, there are some people, I guess, who play it all the time and never stop, but the, the average kind of, what's a typical lifespan of a user? Like, it's, I would say it's very typical. It's, it's game as a service. So it's a very, very long tail. You have some people who churn out very fast, but there is a very big socket of players who play forever. And they are the last level every time. We, we release new levels every two weeks, and then you see immediately activity spikes up as soon as you release new levels. So you have and a hardcore group, and um, I mean, I don't know if you disclosed the number uh, officially, but how many people are paying roughly? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if, actually, no, we do disclose it. We have about 8 million people. 8 million pay? Yeah. And like, the girlfriend of my best friend pays a lot. Um, there was a big upsetness in the morning when they realized on the credit card bill that it wasn't Thai bar, but it was $700 paid on, on Candy Crush in a few days. So you, you, you have found yourself a business model which works. Um, so. Where do you, does the journey go to? Um, are you just developing more and more um, casual, social, uh, mobile, uh, whatever you call those games? Um, and will you find talent, as you say, around the planet? Yep. Is, is this the journey uh, we, we should expect from the king.com? Uh, if, if I give you this, if, if I draw down the strategy, uh, if you, we, we are now very strong and casual. We started basically 11 years ago developing one level only casual games. A casual game is a game which is very easy to, to learn but difficult to master, it's challenging. Think of well, Candy Crush as an example of that. Uh, over time, over the 11 years, we've, de we've developed more than 200 games. And what we have done is to take one of these games and repackage it and develop many more levels. And doing that, we have found out that if we pick the best games, the core gameplay, and we repackage it, actually it becomes, the chances that it becomes a hit game are very high. That's why we launched, uh, now including the last game, five games this year on mobile, and four of these five games became top 15 grossing games uh, on, on iOS and Android in a very short period of time. Now, what is the strategy? The strategy is to continue focus on casual and become, uh, and, 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 and grow casual further, I think casual, is, a, is, the, is the game genre that has the biggest reach. If you look at the top, uh, top, uh, fifth, top uh, 20 games by reach on iOS, 15 of those are casual games. And on Android, it's about 18 of the top 20 games by reach are casual games. So number one priority is to continue to uh, focus on casual. We think there's a big potential there. Um, number two, we have so many players since we have so, uh, a large reach, also to use this reach to extend into other game genres. Uh, so we have not disclosed which game genres those are, but we're looking to always disrupt whatever we do or change and innovate in whatever game genre we, we enter. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are, we are working on it. And uh, key thing is, of course, continuously to, to innovate. So never to stand still, it's about entertainment. So uh, we continuously challenge ourselves in, in terms of doing things better. You understood like no one other the power of leveraging Facebook as a platform to acquire users. Uh, rumor has it that Facebook has made it more and more difficult for game publishers to generate user growth. Uh, mouse and DAOs are, I think, across the board 
for several companies declining. Why do you think this is, and are games on Facebook dead? First of all, I just came back uh, Saturday from San Francisco, where we, we have our regular meeting, we have an office there, and the target of the office is to manage the relationship with our three large partners, with Facebook, with Google, and with Apple. Uh, we, I, say, I used to say that we built our business on the shoulders of giants, and Facebook is one of those. It's a great partner. We work very closely with them in terms of uh, giving them also feedback in terms of what can be improved. Mm -hmm. And they also give us feedback in terms of what we can do better. So it's a great partnership. I think what we have seen is that Facebook has evolved over the years. Uh, initially, it was a social graph, sorry, a social network where everything was basically viral and free. Uh, when actually, we were not the first in, in, in coming to Facebook because we, we only launched on Facebook in uh, 2011 in March. So we actually were quite late entrance, in fact. But why did you make it when you were so late? I mean, there must have been some special trick. Were your games better or your we had, we had We had two things. Number one, I think we were very strong in casual games. And at the time, there was not much variety on, on Facebook. It was mainly, let's say, Farmville type of games or Ville games, where, the, where most games were. So we came in with games which are perfectly suited for the Facebook audience. Secondly, uh, I'd like to say also that we are coming from the street. So we, we, we are not coming with our original model. We had to fight for every user. So we are very strong on marketing. We never grew up with pure, with pure virality. So applying uh, strong games with, to, let's say, with, with the ability to market, we, we managed to, to scale on Facebook. But ultimately, the reason why we managed to become number one on Facebook was because of mobile, because we launched, uh, we launched on mobile. For, we were innovated there in industry games which were fully synchronized with our web Facebook games. And by, having, by growing on mobile, we then, through the back channel to Facebook, managed also to grow, grow the Facebook audience. So mobile, Facebook, good games, good people. Yeah. And Facebook is very strong. I think they're very focused yeah. on, on, uh, on actually having uh, a lot of game companies and, having, and, and making games successful for mobile and for the web. They have a very uh, strong partner team a game partner team which is 100% focused on games. Uh, we are, although we are very large, we, are, we get zero favors. So what applies to us applies to everyone else. Yeah, but mouse and DAOs go down across the board, right? Gamers on, on Facebook. On, on the web. Yes. Yes, on the web. But I think this is not connected so much to Facebook, because it's Facebook is very mobile. strong on mobile. Uh, we use Facebook as a graph across mobile and the web. It actually connects the experience between web and mobile. Um, I think it's more connected to the user, we user heard, experience. We heard that Android, uh, Google Play, and uh, also iOS, of course, are kind of taking more and more market share with their app stores and mm -hmm. uh, putting pressure on Facebook. Uh, I have two more questions. Um, when I uh, came to see you a while ago and I asked you, why don't you buy this company or why don't you buy that company, you said, Marco, you're completely wrong what you're <laughs> suggesting here. Yes, we can buy smart teams and good games, but these days it's all about the mobile marketing, uh, being smarter than your competitor, having better tools. Um, has your business become not a kind of gameplay, or not only gameplay, developing the right games, but becoming an expert in marketing? I refer to Supercell, who I think uh, a year or two years ago, I mean, they. On a day, they, they spent a million on marketing and made a, a 1.1 million revenue, something like that. And how has that evolved? Is it really all about marketing these days? We spend more than $100 million in marketing per quarter. So there's a lot of marketing investment behind. But I think at the core is the product. So you know, if the games are not good, you spend $100 million to tell everyone how bad your products are. So you don't want to do that. So the core of what we do, we are game developers. And the quality of the game is absolutely central. Uh, this said, there is a lot of basically not only art, but also of uh, science to what we do. There is science because we have a very large team of business analytics and business intelligence. Uh, and you have guys. internal tools or you use external partners for that? We have everything is internal tech stack. Our, the tech stack is internal. So we developed our own tools. We, 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 we learned that the scalability or the kind of scale we need. Uh, we can only develop so when you're else. a really big player, like Amazon can afford to have a search engine marketing engine, you can afford to build your own analytics. We developed our own analytics, yeah. 
Everything. So w what companies are you? I mean, there are a lot of people here in, in, your, in your industry. What companies are you interested to acquire? Um, first priority is talent. So we, we are looking for people who can innovate, who don't just copy others, but can really move the needle forward and can create the new. So this is number one priority. The company in Singapore, uh, they, we didn't buy them for the products they had out. We knew the talent from many, many years. Uh, I was following actually one of them for three years and, uh, and suddenly they were raising money. I, we got to know by chance that they were raising money. So I, I, I said, hey, look, why instead of doing that, why don't you focus, because this money will be spent on marketing, instead of throwing away money for marketing which you're raising and you get diluted, why don't you instead focus on what you like to do, which is actually to create the best games in the world and you don't have to worry about anything else. So we found a structure with a, you know, where they get as founders, they can get immediate some cash out, then there is a retention, and then there is a bigger earn out for them. So you keep them motivated. So number one priority is, is talent, yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, games of wide appeal. Uh, so we have a large user base, we want to retain and monetize the user base, so wide appeal. Third, uh, high monetization. So if your monetization is lower than our monetization, it's bad, it's difficult to, to promote them to our players because we would basically bring down the, 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 the monetization of the entire network. Uh, fourth, games which, where we can leverage the network. So we want to have games which you can play globally. Uh, so where you have a good chance to cross sell from your 400 million yeah. players. We, we wouldn't have just a game for, I don't know, for Germany or a game for the US. We want to have games but which Candy we can... Candy Crush is played in pretty much every country globally, right? Yeah. Is it North Korea? Is it allowed? I don't know, I have to check. <laughs> in Korea, for sure, yeah. We, we have Castro, a team in Korea. Has Fidel Castro registered? We have a team in Korea. Uh, good question. I heard he's addicted to We had, we had quite a few celebrities playing, but I'm not sure if Fidel Castro was one of them. Probably not. Well, you know, I, w I want to close. As being a banker and looking at numbers, of course, I need to make a comment on your valuation multiple. And, you know, I think it's so unfair. But then if I hear about the new game you launched two days ago, it's quite interesting. If you look at the multiple of Zenga, which was probably earlier successful and your success came along. On the other hand, um, they hadn't had a hit for a very, very long time. And I think they bought earlier this year CSR, the, the car racing thing, and um, they're trading at a very high multiple. I don't have the exact multiple, I think it was around 20 times EBITDA. And then there's you, which has a huge organization, and the title is there, 1 billion EBITDA. And I think it's trending around five times EBITDA. And while the Americans get the benefit of the doubt to find a new hit, you probably get the disadvantage of the doubt. And um, I'm not asking you to comment on valuation, but I hope and I wish that you reverse that metrics. Thank you so much. I think that we, I, was, I mean, I think now the share price in the last couple of days went up again. But I think we had the lowest valuation in tech, which is not sure if, it's, uh, if there's a price to get there. Uh, but uh, what I say internally is, look guys, I think where, we, where the price is in a year and a half from now depends only from us. Where the price is tomorrow, you know, it's difficult to manage. But in a year and a half from now, it depends entirely from us. Um, and I, I, I don't know about Zynga, I mean, I, I like very much Don, but I, you know, it's, it's, it's a different, uh, I think we have all the big tools, I think we have very large reach, uh, we have a lot of cash. And we have fantastic people. So, well, what I find interesting, I mean, it's such a giant industry. I, I'm sorry, by the way, I, yeah. I think that in terms of you asked me what, what is, I, you're, not, you're not, not asking for my opinion, but we just announced a $150 million share buyback. So that's a clear signal from us that we think it's cheap. So, so you acquired shares. You, you yeah, put we, more we, eggs in your king.com basket. Yeah, we, we will basically buy back so, some shares so you, in uh, setting from you, next year. You obviously believe in it. Yeah. Well, it, it's wonderful, uh, Ricardo, to have you back. and. You weren't here yesterday, I think. We're going to Berlin, so uh, next year in June, 9 and 10th, uh, we are having a conference in, in Berlin. And cool. I know you speak German, so maybe we, we get you Berlin. over there. I love Berlin. We have an office there, so it's, I look and forward. At, at 4 p.m. in half an hour, I haven't seen him yet. It's kind of a bit volatile, this gentleman. But uh, Oliver Zammer is going to be on stage on, on that seat. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Thank you, Michael. Congratulations. Yeah, see you again.